today is Monday, May 25th, 2020. We have a lot of good stuff for you in store today. But first, let's get started with our Monday exercise. Hello, my name is Emily, and I will be guiding you through today's yoga and meditation session. Let's get started. Namaste. First meditation activity is to put one hand on your belly and slowly breathe in and out five times. Get deep breath. Three. This next one is easy and probably my favorite. Take a deep breath in like you're smelling a fresh batch of chocolate chip cookies. <sighs> Smells good. Our next meditation exercise wants you to pretend your breath is like a marching band. Breathe in for four counts. One, two, three, four. And breathe out for four counts. One, two, three, four. Ready? Let's do it. You know what would help is some tapping like we were in a marching band. There we go. We did it. Finally, part of meditation is mindfulness being mindful of all the good things that we have in our lives and in the world. So we're gonna finish our mindfulness and meditation series on thinking about something positive that's going on in your life. And I want you to breathe in that happiness and blow out the stress that you might be feeling. So for me, something that's positive is that I am sitting outside of my house and I hear birds chirping and I can feel the, the, the breeze blowing. Um, just fresh air, uh, so I'm so thankful for that in this time that we're all at home. Um, and I want to blow out the stress of being stuck at home and, and take in that all these good things there are about being home. So, I want you to take a minute, think about something that you're grateful for in your life right now, something or a positive thought. Take a minute and think of something that you're grateful for. Mm-hmm. That's a good one, me too. All right, and then think about something that is stressful for you. Mm -hmm. That can be stressful, that's true. So let's breathe in our positive thought. And blow out your stress. Breathe in happiness. Blow out sadness. Breathe in white light. Breathe out darkness. That'll do it for our meditation and mindfulness portion. Next, we're moving on to yoga. Stay tuned. Today's yoga includes both sitting and standing poses. Please do what you can, however you can. Always remember to be safe and use your balance. All right, let's get started. Our first pose is the lotus pose. It says to sit up tall, cross your legs. Most of you are in a wheelchair, so you won't be able to cross your legs. But if you can cross your legs, go ahead and do that. Rest the palms of your hands on your knees. Relax and breathe. Feel the energy radiating from the palms of your hands. Our next pose is called the house, which most of you are in right now, hopefully. Um, you're going to sit up tall again. This time I've crossed my legs, so if you do want to try crossing your legs, go ahead and do that. Bring your hands above your head 
and bring your palms together. Relax and sink upwards. I like this pose because it's called the pretzel. So again, sit tall, cross your legs or keep them flat on the floor, whichever you prefer. Turn your body, oh, get those muscles working. And place your palm on the floor behind you and look behind you, stretch your back and relax. Great, now do the other side. I haven't used these muscles in a long time, so it feels good to stretch. How about you? We are now in the standing position. If you're able to, stand. If not, copy my arm movements. For now, stand up tall for the mountain pose. Put your arms by your side, face up, and hold it for 10 seconds. Our next pose is called the moon pose. Again, stand up tall, put your arms over your head, and we're gonna bend to the left like the shape of a crescent moon. Hold still. Good. If you wish, you can do the other side. Our next pose is called the chair. Bring your hands up over your head and slightly bend your knees like you're gonna sit in a chair. Hold that squat for about five to 10 seconds. Yeah, no, squats are not my thing. The next pose is called the tree pose. Stand with your arms at your side, bring them up over your head and lift up one leg to the other. Now hold it. Keep your balance as best as you can without hurting yourself or anyone else. For now, we're going to do the star pose. This is kind of also how I sleep. Start with your legs at a wide stance. Then bring your arms up and hold it. Kind of like a starfish. But yeah, this is how I sleep. Our last and final pose is perhaps one of the most famous yoga poses. It's called the warrior pose. Start with one leg in front of the other and bend. Then bring both arms out and lean forward. We are all quarantine warriors. Mm. Let's check out today's observances. For today's first observance, you may already know this, but it's Memorial Day, a national holiday. On Memorial Day, we honor and mourn the lives of those that were sacrificed in the United States Armed Forces. These brave men and women deserve the recognition of putting their lives on the line for us every day to protect us and our country. Memorial Day is typically celebrated on the last Monday of May, which is today, while Veterans Day is on November 11th, and it's also another day that we honor those who served in the U.S. military. Um, Memorial Day, um, you can remember it by memory, so we remember those who have passed away uh, as a result of being in war versus Veterans Day is we celebrate everybody who has served in war, whether they are living or deceased. So Memorial Day is more of a somber holiday and we really focus in on those who have lost their lives because of war. So on a serious note, we just wanna say thank you to all of our veterans and especially those who have lost their lives in the armed forces and thank you for protecting our country. Your service will never be forgotten. Today is also National Missing Children's Day. 
Unfortunately, many kids wander off or are kidnapped every day. This is a growing problem in our world and society. You may have heard of an Amber Alert, as most of the times our phones vibrate and ding when we get the Amber Alert, and this message is sent across many different platforms and technologies. Um, Amber is actually an acronym. It stands for America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response, Amber. Um, it was also named after a girl named Amber Hagerman. She was a nine-year-old girl who was unfortunately abducted and killed in Arlington, Texas in 1996. So most radio stations and phone companies, they will send out these Amber Alerts to help prevent future tragedies such as the one that we saw in the case of Amber Hagerman. But we are thankful now that we have this system that will hopefully keep many more kids in our society safe. All right, please let that be the end of the bad news. Onwards, today is the discussion of tap dance day. Tap dance is a form of a dance where the dancer would tap their feet on the floor to create a style of percussion. Metal is attached to the toe and the heel to create a tapping noise when their feet are moved. Many Broadway shows feature tapping as part of the show. However, tap dancing isn't just about the movement of the feet. The incorporation of the whole body and arm movements can work with the tapping of the dancer. Now, I have a special treat for you today. These are my baby shoes. But I'm here to give you a special performance of my tap dancing shoes. Five, six, seven, eight. I don't perform for just anyone, you guys. Thank you. Oh, we're on. Um, yes, hello. Today is National Wine Day. This is just juice. It's really 11 a.m. where I'm at. Anyways, let's learn about wine. Wine is an alcoholic beverage that is created from fermented grapes. The alcohol content of wine is formed when yeast is added to the grapes. Now the yeast would eat the sugar in the grapes and produce alcohol, carbon dioxide, and heat. The flavor of wine is primarily contributed to the ingredients used and the process of fermentation storing the wine. Hold that thought. My blood sugar is low. Okay. Green grapes are stomped to create white wine. See how the colors are kind of similar? So, science question for you. If I have a red grape, which I don't because the store doesn't have any. If I had a red grape, what color wine do you think I would have? Today is National Towel Day. It's celebrating everything we love about towels. What? What's that? It's not? It's not about real towels? Oh. <clears throat> towel Day is the celebration of the author Douglas Adams. Fans of Douglas Adams would drape a towel over the shoulder or however to please and show appreciation of Douglas Adams' work. I knew that. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was Douglas Adams' work. It is a science fiction comedy about a man on Earth trying to stop aliens from demolishing his house to build a space highway. As described in the book, the towel is a significant object and it's the most practical thing to have when traveling through space. Can somebody fact check that? Yo, what up, dog? My name is Baggy Smalls. Yo, yo. I'm here to tell you about Paper Bag Day. I'm a paper puppet. Yo. Anyways, paper bags are better for the environment than plastic because unlike plastic, I can be reused and recycled. 
Thank you, Baggy Smalls, for helping me out with that very important section on paper bags. You are also my only friend during quarantine. Our animal study today is on giraffes. Did you know that giraffes are the tallest land mammal that exists on Earth? Their necks alone are so long that they can range from 6.6 .6 to 7.9 feet, which allows them to eat the leaves off the tallest trees. Can you imagine, instead of having two chins, having a seven foot neck? All aboard for the vegetation station. Yes, this is a children's hat. Today, our vegetation we will study is radish. Gross. Radish is an edible root vegetable that can be eaten raw or cooked. They are known for their distinct red and white color and very long leaves. Today's featured food is called Bananas Foster. Our two main ingredients are, of course, bananas, but also vanilla ice cream. It is a dessert and it originated in New Orleans, Louisiana. It is made by coating a sauce around the bananas and then adding alcohol on top of it and then lighting it on fire. The sauce that coats these bananas is made from butter, brown sugar, cinnamon, dark rum, and banana liqueur. Toppings can also uh, be added, such as whipped cream, you know that's my favorite already, and different types of nuts. So, do you think you'd try bananas, Foster? Today in history. On this day in 1977, originally titled Star Wars The Space Epic, created by George Lucas, it easily became one of the mainstays of American film and culture. The film was so successful that new Star Wars films are created to expand its cinematic universe. Have you ever seen a Star Wars movie? I think I always fall asleep during them. Today in 1986 was Hands Across America Day. This public event was an effort to fundraise money for different charities such as Feeding the Hungry and Sheltering the Homeless. They would be sponsored for $10 a person, and participants were able to reserve a spot in a human chain stretching from the West Coast all the way over to the East Coast of America. Participants would hold hands side by side for at least 15 minutes. The event was declared a success with $15 million raised for multiple charities. Now, today we live in a quarantine society. So holding hands might look a little bit different. Uh, first, you're going to need a mask. It's got to cover your nose and your mouth. Okay. If you have protective eyewear, that's also helpful. Except my glasses get fogged up really easily. Next, you're going to want to wear gloves. I don't have any gloves, but I'm using my mom's gardening gloves. Uh-huh. Could you imagine doing this to hold somebody's hand? Whew. All right. And last but not least, you can't forget to disinfect. There, now you're ready to hold hands. On this day in 2001, mountain climber Eric Weyenmeyer became the first blind man to climb Mount Everest. When Eric was just a baby, he was diagnosed with retinoschisis. This disease would cause him to lose his eyesight just by the age of 13. Even though he lost his eyesight, he did not let that stop him from living his best life. With Dr. Sherman, Eric was able to reach the summit of Mount Everest, and he became the first person who is blind to climb the mountain. Eric continues to this day his adventures while also being a motivational speaker. He inspires those who think they cannot do stuff because of their limitations. What is something that you'd want to do, even though you think you might have limitations? Notable figures born on this day. We would like to say happy birthday to Sir Ian McKellen. He is an English actor with numerous awards ranging from movies such as Magneto in the X-Men films, Gandalf in Lord of the Rings, and also the Hobbit trilogies. Happy birthday, Sir Ian McKellen. Notable figures who passed on this day. 
Lyubov Popova. Sorry, I'm still not sure about that. What is Lyubov Popova in Russian? In Russian, lie above the palma is polis nad palmy. All right, yeah, I'm just going to do my best. A notable figure who passed today was Lyubov Popova. She was a Russian artist whose paintings were attributed to the avant-garde art movement. One style of avant-garde is cubism, which is popularized by the famous painter Pablo Picasso. The Daily Dose of Art This piece is one of Lyubov Popova's artwork and it is entitled The Pianist. She painted this in 1914 and it currently resides in the National Gallery of Canada. So, after taking a good look at this piece, why do you think Popova would have called this piece The Pianist? Today's career spotlight focuses on sommeliers. Sommeliers are individuals who are trained in the art of identifying wine. Hey, isn't it National Wine Day today? Sommeliers tend to work in restaurants. They help pair wine to certain foods. Wine and food pairing is important to enhance a meal without overpowering it. What are some examples of wine and food that go together well? The only one that I know really is wine and cheese, but I know some people that like wine and chocolate. Do you know of anything else? Word of the day, galvanize. The Daily Weather with Emily Leach. Today's forecast is sunny with a high of 86 and a low of 63 degrees. There is 0% chance of rain and the humidity level is 38%. The weather warming up seems to be the trend for this week. Be sure to wear a large brimmed hat when going outside. Oh, I look like the Pope. Uh, the humidity is low and the skies are sunny. Wear some sun protection when you go outside. Thank you. Well, have a nice day. The Daily News. And now for today's top headline. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, nearly 40 million people have filed for unemployment since March, which is a record high. Many people, though, are hesitant to find work because more often than not, the unemployment check they're receiving is greater than what they would be receiving from their typical job. The average weekly payout for unemployment in the U.S. is $350 in state benefits. An additional funding is also included of $600 per week in federal stimulus funding. A recent college graduate told CNN that she was lucky to make between $250 to $300 a week at her current job out of a bowling alley. She is quoted as saying, This is the first time I've ever felt financially stable, is when I'm unemployed. Companies who have had to lay off employees due to the virus say they feel like they are competing with unemployment to try and get their workers back as businesses begin to reopen. So, what do you guys think about this issue? Keep in mind, unemployment is only temporary and bound to run out. It encourages those on un unemployment to get back to work, which is why it is temporary. Hey guys, Emily here with today's educational lesson. Today, we will take a glimpse into the life of Thomas Edison. Are you ready? Let's go! This man is Thomas Edison. He is known as one of America's most famous inventors. An inventor is someone who creates a new product or a service. So, do you think you know what he invented? Do you? Most people say the light bulb, and while he was the first person to patent the light bulb, he did not invent it. Edison patented his version of the incandescent light bulb in 1879, but work on electricity started in the early 1800s with Italian inventor Alessandro Volta. Volta kind of sounds like voltage. Do you see a connection? Then English inventor and chemist Humphrey Davy built upon Volta's work to create an electric lamp, but the light did not last for very long. For years, people tried to figure out a way to get the light to stay on longer. Then, they figured out that putting the filaments inside of a glass container, i.e. the light bulb, would keep the oxygen out and help the light last longer. Edison figured out that a thinner filament within the bulb would make it last longer in the year of 1878. 
Now, before the creation of electricity and light bulbs, how do you think people would see things in the dark? People used to use these lamps that burned on oil or gasoline to create a flame that would light the lantern. Could you imagine how many of these you would need to light up your whole house? What about the entire day program? Edison's carbonized bamboo filament in the bulb would allow the light to stay on for 1,200 hours. So he found a way to build upon what other inventors and scientists were already working on for the light bulb. And he found a substance that would allow the light to last longer than anyone else he was competing against. He raced to put a patent on his new creation of the light bulb. He was awarded the patent in January of 1880. The first industrial revolution was approximately between the years 1760 and 1820. In this revolution, we saw developments of the steam engine, assembly line, cotton gin, and the telegraph. Next came the second industrial revolution in the years 1870 to 1914. Products or inventions that arose from this time frame included the telephone, the light bulb, skyscrapers, and combustion engines. In the 1880s, there was even something called the War of the Currents, between Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. While Edison created the direct current, it was a current that runs in one direction, and this was the standard of electricity in the US at the time, but it could not be made into different voltages. Tesla, however, created the alternating current. It reverses the current a certain amount of times per second. Edison tried to discredit Tesla at every chance he could so that his system would be seen as superior and he could con continue earning royalties on his idea. Now, there was a World Fair that year in Chicago of 1893, and the company General Electric, or GE, wanted to pay Edison to power the fair through his electricity. However, George Westinghouse, the inventor of the railroad's air brake system, said he could power the fair for less money than Edison by using Tesla's alternating current. Westinghouse was also paid to power Niagara Falls that same year. So as you can see, there is a bit of competition between these three men in the electricity business. Today, we mainly use alternating current electricity for most of our items that require it. So let's investigate how a light bulb works. Inside of the glass light bulb, you'll see we have two different types of wire and connecting those two wires is something called the filament. In the beginning, inventors tried for many years to create a filament that would allow the light to remain lit for a long period of time. Edison finally found out that a carbonized bamboo was the best choice at the time, and it created up to 1,200 hours of light. Today, the carbonized bamboo has been replaced with the element tungsten. So, how do these wires and filaments create light, you might ask? The light bulb is screwed into an electrical source. See the black tip at the way bottom of the light bulb? That allows the electric current to flow from the source up through the wires in the bulb. Electrons are flowing from a negatively charged area to a positively charged area along the filament in the bulb. This creates a friction and a tight tension. Have you ever tried to push two magnets together and they just won't connect because they are opposites? Imagine that tension in the light bulb on a micro level. That friction creates a heat, which releases energy, and a glow then emits from the filament, which is how we get light. Burn, baby, burn. Now for a did you know question. Did you know that Thomas Edison and Henry Ford were friends? You may know of Henry Ford as the father of cars because he was a key player in the development of the assembly line and mass production. He also worked on creating the combustible engine, which helped to make the cars we see on the road today. He even made cars more affordable for the average American. Not me anyways. Ford and Edison constantly championed each other and drove each other's innovations forward. That's a pretty cool friendship, huh? I think we should learn more about Ford on another episode. As this video comes to a close, take a moment to reflect on what you've learned today. Share with someone one thing you might have learned, because together we all have the ability to learn. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Well, that is all for today's daily show. I hope you guys had fun and have a good night. We will see you tomorrow. Bye.